What is going on guys? It is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including backlash against Stephanie McMahon, Triple H's big claim for Elimination Chamber, Undertaker at Elimination Chamber, a WWE star confirms major injury, Randy Orton breaks his silence on Vince's allegations, WWE bans Hall of Famer from attending Sting's retirement match, a famous rapper buys Eddie Guerrero's lowrider, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. Now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at did Stephanie McMahon actually help Ashley Massaro? At the top of today's news, there's a story that could provide more details on the allegations that WWE covered up the alleged assault committed against former WWE superstar Ashley Mizarro. Recently, an attorney representing the late wrestler in the now dismissed concussion suit against the WWE released a statement from Ms. Mizarro concerning the incident when she was allegedly sexually assaulted whilst participating in one of WWE's tribute to the troop shows. The statement claims that Ms. Mizarro informed the WWE of the assault but was told to keep quiet about it apparently because WWE didn't want to ruin its working relationship with the military. Cara Papier, who claims to be Miss Mazzaro's best friend, appeared on the program News Nation and revealed that Ashley opened up to her after she returned from the show in Kuwait, where she was allegedly assaulted and told her what happened. She told News Nation that Ashley spoke with Vince McMahon many times. Vince had his daughter Stephanie McMahon take his place because she was a female, a woman to make Ashley comfortable and they just played with her. They played with her because everything that Stephanie had made her feel comfortable and safe about, as soon as they walked into this boardroom meeting, Ashley was on her own completely, and she was threatened there and no compassion. There was no sympathy, there was nothing. Now if these details turn out to be true, it will only add to the WWE's legal trouble as Janelle Grant's lawsuit contains allegations that WWE knew about Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis alleged misconduct towards her but failed to do anything about it. If a lawyer is able to prove that Stephanie McMahon knew about the allegations and covered things up, it would not only hurt any defense by the WWE, but cast the company in a very bad light. One can only imagine an attorney arguing that WWE relied on a woman to lull an alleged victim into a false sense of security and then ignore her allegations. Now firstly, it's important to remember that this case is a long way from court. Furthermore, her comments are hearsay, which may be inadmissible in court. However, with the case being a court of public opinion, just about anything goes. However, ex-user Lex Alexis as well, a woman claiming to be Ashley Mazzaro's daughter is taking exception to her comments. And she tweeted, Cora Pipia wasn't even a friend of my mother's when she passed. She was an ex-best friend who, since her passing, has just spammed message me, unsettling delirious messages, and has fabricated bizarre messages, etc, etc. She followed up on a comment to note, No one who supports the Mazzaro family, literally all that's remaining is me and my grandma Barbara, who I live with anyways, will go to the media or news outlets. They know it's against our wishes, our mother's wishes. There's nothing in Lex's comments that suggests that she disputes Pippa's story about Miss Mazzaro's allegations against the WWE, but apparently she is pointing out that Pippa and her mother had a falling out. All we're hoping for is that there's justice for Ashley Mazzaro. Next up, Randy Orton gives his opinion on Vince's allegations. And whilst we're on the topic of Vince McMahon's allegations and misconduct within the WWE, former WWE Champion Randy Orton also gave his take on what he thinks about the allegations. In an interview with Sports Illustrated, he would mention, I would not be where I am today without Vince McMahon. F if I'm reading this sh what you've seen and read, I've seen and read. As far as commenting on that, it effing hurts my heart. It hurts my heart. What do you guys think of Randy Orton's comments? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Triple H's big claim for Elimination Chamber. Is the WWE's upcoming Elimination Chamber Perth just another PLE before WrestleMania 40? Well, not according to WWE's Chief Content Officer Triple H, who uploaded a video hyping this Saturday's show and claiming, we are just days away from a night that will be filled with moments that will leave the world talking. The Cerebral Assassin also told fans, The Chamber matches are set. The implications for the road to WrestleMania will be monumental. There's no greater time of the year than right now, the road to WrestleMania. I cannot tell you how excited we all are to get to Perth. When we get there, there will just be one question to ask. Are you ready? 
Now, Chamber currently has four matches booked, the second PLE in a row to feature just four bouts. Some fans are looking closely at a segment that could have ramifications as big as one of the PLE's matches. While World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes aren't wrestling, they will appear on the Grayson Waller effect, and many fans believe this segment will also feature an appearance by The Rock and Roman Reigns, possibly to set up a tag match at WrestleMania. Are you guys excited about Elimination Chamber? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, The Undertaker at Elimination Chamber. Is Taker going to appear at the Elimination Chamber? Well, a recent tweet from the Phenom has fans speculating after Taker tweeted, made it to Perth, get ready, because Friday, it's on. While The Undertaker has business in Australia, it's unlikely to have anything to do with Saturday's PLE, although you can never rule out an appearance to pop the audience. The Undertaker will actually be performing his One Dead Man show in Australia. Next up, WWE star confirms injury. Ashotzi Blackheart will be out of action for some time thanks to an ACL injury she suffered last week during an NXT Women's Championship match against Lara Valkyrie. Shotzi informed the fans via Instagram that, I tore my ACL, which means I'll be out of action for about nine months. Thank you to everyone who has checked up on me. I'm so sorry if I haven't responded. I'm just extremely devastated and angry. Some of you know I have been through a lot the last few years and it's been so hard to keep up with what I think is expected of me and honestly my mental health had been at an all-time low but I pushed through and I was feeling motivated and like myself again. I was hoping to go to NXT to prove myself again, earn some respect, build back my confidence and start putting the heartache from the past two years behind me. But while this is a major setback, Shotzi knows from personal experience that things could be worse. As she told the fans, I feel defeated right now, but I'm simultaneously feeling the most motivated I've ever been. I've been through worse. I've watched my sister who is fighting cancer fight tougher battles. I'm just taking this as a sign to slow down. I didn't take time off when both my stepdad and my dad passed and that really affected me. Now I'm looking forward to coming back, not just physically stronger, but mentally also. Ashotzi is one of many women on the WWE's undercard that continues to work extremely hard while waiting for a lucky break. Hopefully things will click for her when she returns. In the meantime, we send our best wishes for Shotzi for a fast and full recovery. Next up, a superstar turning heel. Is NXT superstar Roxanne Perez turning heel? Well, all the signs are there as the female talent who once had a positive attitude towards the squared circle has had enough. Perez has caught a string of bad breaks lately and she took out her frustrations on Ren Sinclair who tried to cheer her up. This led to a match where Perez showed an aggressive side that's new to her fans, including Roxanne refusing to break a submission hold on Sinclair after Ren tapped out. Backstage, Perez had a meltdown when she learned that Shotzi had been injured during her NXT Women's Championship match against Lyra Valkyrie. This led to Lyra quickly issuing an open challenge, with Lash Legend racing in to seize the spot before anyone else. Perez took out her anger by trashing a monitor backstage. At 22, Diz already held the NXT Women's Championship and the NXT Women's Tag Team Championship. However, it's clear she wants to do more and she doesn't think her past practice of positivity will help her get her any further. It'll be interesting to see how things play out over the next few weeks. Next up, a famous rapper buys Eddie Guerrero's lowrider. And did Vanilla Ice, aka Robert Van Winkle, buy the late great Eddie Guerrero's lowriders? Well, that's a story making the rounds, but there appears to be more to it than meets the eye. According to Wrestling News, Vanilla Ice got the car for a cool $15,000 when it was likely worth much, much more. They noted it's unclear if Eddie actually owned the car because when lowriders were used on TV for his entrance, WWE would go to a local car dealer and rent one from each city. In addition to being used on TV, the specific car was featured in a lowrider magazine photo shoot with Eddie posing next to it. What do you guys think of Vanilla Ice acquiring Eddie Guerrero's lowrider? Man has an incredible collection of cars and he was actually very smart with his money when his rap career turned upside down. And finally, WWE banning a legend from attending Sting's retirement match. And last but not least, as the wrestling world prepares for Sting's retirement match at AEW's Revolution pay-per-view, it appears one of Sting's friends won't be able to attend the show. Kevin Nash, who worked with Sting in WCW as well as TNA Wrestling, informed fans on his Click This podcast he asked me to be a part of it and I just said that because of my positioning with the company, with WWE, I couldn't even be there in the crowd. I think he wanted me to be there because I'm one of the guys that's been with him the whole run, right? Yeah, I think he was disappointed. I mean, I was disappointed, but I knew. I asked, when you ask, there's that 3-4 second pause. Although it sounds like the two-time Hall of Famer would like to watch the match in person, Nash knows the ramifications of signing a WWE Legends deal and it's part of the game the WWE plays where it keeps its wrestlers or former wrestlers under contract from appearing in rival promotions. Well there you have it folks, the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know. Be sure to leave your comments down below, I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.